uh, Mr. Scott Woodward here with us on this Wednesday morning. Scott, good morning. Thank you for joining hey, us. Hey, glad to be here, Jordy. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely, man. Um, there has We were talking about the way that our industry is changing. Media is changing so different than what it was two years ago. Two years from now, it'll be polarizing different than what we sit in today. College athletics feels the same way. Can, can you kind of describe, since you've even been on the job here in Baton Rouge, how it has changed and what you anticipate maybe even the future to feel like? Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird in a perverse way, Jordy. You know me well, is that I, I kind of relish the change, and I do like it. I'm one of the few people that, that embraces it, and we're very lucky at LSU to have it, uh, to be where we are and to be able to do that. I mean, I can't say that for everyone in the business because it is – uh, unsettling uh, in, in a lot of ways but for us you know change is a good thing and I think um, I think we're going to be the beneficiary of it and it's not gonna it's not gonna stop it's just gonna keep on going yeah. and I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a crystal ball and can tell you what was going on and what's gonna happen but you know it's it's we're gonna be here and we're gonna embrace it and we're gonna uh, take uh, advantage of it uh, the best we can. I remember the last time I talked to you here on this platform, it was after Kim Mulkey was hired as the women's coach. <clears throat> and I kind of was speaking to you kind of like almost in shock, like coach, yeah. like you got coach Mulkey here. And you kind of shot back, like people should expect this at LSU. Yeah. People should expect Kim Mulkey to want to come here yeah. to coach at LSU. You have changed the feeling around the athletic program in a short time. Do you feel the momentum changing and, and, and kind of reversing its course in that building you, you know it's 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 a matter that it was always there it's just you know it was a untapped gold mine and and look you know some of your listeners are not going to want to hear this but it's true I mean uh, Mark Emmert and Nick Saban changed the culture yeah. at LSU in the early 2000s to where we could have gone down divergent paths so, you know we could have gone to the hey lesser side of mediocrity in the SEC or we could be at the big boys table, which we have been at for, frankly, two decades now. And, and there's no doubt that that's our place. Hey, I'm just lucky to be the steward of this uh, mm -hmm. great enterprise. But, you, you know, back to your original question of it's things to come and what's happening. You know, we saw, you know, what happened in the Big 12 with, with yeah. gaining their two marquee members in our league. And, and, you know, we didn't go after them, chasing them. They came to us. And that was a beautiful thing. And the same thing that we watched in the Pac-12. So here you go. It's no coincidence that Jay Johnson and Kim Mulkey came from those two leagues. Right. You know, they're not stupid hmm. people. Yeah. You know, they're they're yeah. very smart and they have a very futuristic view of things. And they see what's happening in the SEC and particularly in Baton Rouge. And like, yeah. hey, we want to be part of this because we know there's going to be a lot of good things happening and a lot of growth uh, uh, going forward. Speaking of Jay Johnson, he has shaken up the baseball world over the last couple of days. You've gotten some mega transfers in from the portal, um, but one move that has shaken up the sport has been Wes Johnson jumping off of a first-place team in the major leagues as a pitching coach to come to LSU in the middle of the year. Um, talk about the decision behind that, that move and what you expect to maybe – see from that uh, and now that it's happened here at LSU you guys kind of being the pace setter on it yeah and he, here again not to sound corny or maudlin or anything about it is it it's the place you know it's mm -hmm. it's who we are you know I've talked to you about it all the time about your grandfather and how he was always a, a supporter of mine and and, and a guy that I, I could look up to and do that well same thing with Skip Burtman you know I, we stand on the shoulders of giants like that and you know what Skip Burtman built is just you know, phenomenal, and w people want to be here, and this is what, what happens, and you just never know in circumstances of what and how people are, are, are ready to make a move or make a change, and and I think we're in a key position with that. Uh, not only is, is Wes Johnson, you know, a star in the business and one of the best pitching coaches there are out there, but he wanted to be in Baton Rouge and back here. He made a conscious decision of doing that and wanting to be here because of how special it is. And I think here again, we don't give ourselves enough credit because we're here and we're too close to it at times. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, I think that's a point in case. But, you know, the other thing is, is that, hey, Jay's got it rolling pretty good. Yeah, I mean, does. year one, he loses two coaches to two uh, yeah. uh, power five teams. That's, you know, it's pretty impressive uh, uh, for what's happening and his ability to, to locate and to uh, identify talent 
they could come in and we're just hopefully going to get better now. Yeah, absolutely. I always said about the, the, the head coaching position here with the football program, um, for you being from Baton Rouge, going to LSU, working at LSU, leaving, coming back as the athletics director, you always knew you were going to have to make that decision at some point in, in your, your role. Can you talk about what that process was like, how big that choice was, and now that you have Kelly, how he's adapted to the SEC and LSU? Yeah, you know, like always, and, and Jordy, I've told you this, and I've told everyone that I know too well, is that, you know, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, uh, or, or, or the, the things become self-evident. And, you know, having to make a change became self-evident. Uh, as much as we love Coach O and what he does and how he does it, and that special year he gave us in 2019, which will probably go down as the greatest football team in the history of college football. Um, it, it just wasn't going, you know, those next two years, the, the way that we wanted it to go. And, you know, we came to that conclusion. And um, that, that was one of those things that uh, they're hard because, yeah. you know, I, I love Coach O and I love his two sons and I've gotten to know him, three sons, gotten to know him well. and. And, uh, and it's hard to make that change, but it was absolutely necessary. Yeah. And Brian Kelly, that process of, of, of bringing him in and going after a, a name and a, a sitting Notre Dame coach yeah. uh, and being able to bring him here, um, that process and the, the ultimate choice, I guess, to land there. Yeah. You know, it, it goes back to what we have here and how special it is. I mean, you, you guys know statistics and, and trivia better than I do, but, you know, where in the past couple of decades have three different coaches won national championships? I don't, yeah. I don't think you can name it. No. Cause this I can place, name one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this place is special, and, and everyone knows it, and I think Coach was uh, loving where he was at Notre Dame, had a good situation, but he wanted to take it to that next level, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and he wanted what we could have to offer here especially in our league and especially what's going on. And he relishes competition, yeah. whether it's, uh, you know, Nick Saban or, or you name it uh, in our league, it's stacked with great coaches to take on. Uh, I remember Joe Brady told me when, when he was first on the job and then Jamar Cain told us the same thing yesterday is that you love the recruiting part oh, of, I do. of football. I do. Where does that come from? It, it's just, you love these kids and you love to see it. And it goes back, Jordy, when I was a kid, I remember I was working concessions at LSU, and I would see uh, young couples bring their child there and just stare up at Tiger Stadium, and I know what was going on. It was the aspiration that this kid went to LSU and that how special it was. Yeah. And so you just – that's why we're in this business is for these kids. Mm -hmm. and, and you like doing – uh, these things and you love seeing uh, how and what it does to them because LSU changed me. It was a transformational place for me and it was just so special. And, and you see that in these kids once they come in and you get to know them and you get to know their family and it just becomes, you know, almost intoxifying, you know, sure, just, you just, sure. you're intoxicated by it and, and you just, you can't help it. And, you know, Laughing and looking at this one, that was a special player, Dirty 30. I mean, <laughs> man, he, that dude could ball. And, and I love messing with him, you know. Yeah. I remember his, it, it, when he was a kid, he's Absolutely. a grown man now, you Absolutely. know. And, and and you see these things and, uh, and, and it, it, you know, you just wish him well. And, you know, you know the, these guys are scattered through my life, and whether mm -hmm. they're doctors or, or successful business people or or educators or, or just doing great things in the community. I just go through and back, you know, back and forth through the names of guys you run into, you just make you smile. You know, I stay in touch with Matt Malk. I stay in touch mm -hmm. with, um, you know, Dr. Henry Barham, who was a walk on sure. here. And, and I see these guys all the time, Brady James, uh, you know, obviously Booger and, and Marcus being in your business, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see Ryan Clark. These guys were kids when I got when I know them. I was kind of a kid too. Sure, but it was it was fun, and and that's what's that's what's so rewarding about it. And you know that that this place LSU and Louisiana takes care of our of our future uh, future uh, 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 I would say 
future citizens of this community and there's nothing like it. I mean, you even see Shaq talking about yeah. how important LSU was to building his brand and what he was about. And it's, it is. It's just different. Yeah. Um, voices, powerful voices in the sport have said that NIL has made college football maybe unsustainable. Nick Saban has, has voiced it. Brian Kelly has, has worried, voiced some concern about it. What, what's your, what your vantage point of, of NIL and, and yeah. how, how's the future look yeah. around sports with it? It's just like anything else. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get in, into hyperbole, but it's, you know, everything is. I mean, uh, frankly, I'm still worried more about concussions. You know, we uh-huh. don't talk about it much anymore, but, you know, we've, we've kind of helped solve it in, in a lot of ways and make the game a lot safer. So anytime we have existential threats, which this one could or could not be, we just deal with it, and we mm-hmm. will deal with it. You know, it's just part of the game. And, you know, I don't mind a lot of what's come out of this, uh, movement of doing more for the student athletes, but like anything else, it boomerangs a little too far, and sure. you got to swing it back into hey, what we do for the student athletes, and it's a hell of a lot, and and I'm proud of that fact that that we are leaders in doing that, but it, it, it is, and 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 Nick and and BK are exactly right. It's it's one of those things that we have to be very careful about because we don't want it to become incentive pay for play kind of thing we want it to be uh, another tool in what we do whether it's a, a degree or an education or whether it's you know taking care of someone while they're here or whether it's investing in their medical well-being while we're here all that stuff costs money and you know obviously nil is another tool in what we're going to participate in and how we do it and frankly it's here to stay and we're going to embrace it and just hopefully not go down that bad path. Yeah. You had a great line in Destin when you were asked by Feinbaum about your thoughts on two of your good friends, Nick Saban <laughs> and Fisher, Jimbo Fisher, going back and forth. But that's, that's what you don't want, right? I mean, I'd imagine from Sankey's standpoint, you guys' standpoint, you don't want two of your power figures publicly going at each yeah. other like that. But that's just part of it. You know, they're mm-hmm. competitors. They're fiercely uh, uh, competitive in what and how they do it. And it's going to sometimes get off the rail, and you just got to get it back on. And yeah. You know, those things are unfortunate. I, I, you know, you don't like them. I didn't like them. I, you know, I had to joke about it because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. I was pissed about it. You know, come on, man. Get, right. get, let's go. This is not good for the for the greater good. Sure. Um, but, but you know, I, I know they're good people and they care about their student athletes and, and they do, you know, a, a good job. And, and um, you know, it's just part of how the game gets hyper competitive. I loved two of the last announcements your office has made about commemorating two of its former athletes. Simone Augustus is going to get a statue and Pistol Pete will get a statue unveiled. How did those decisions get made? And and I'd imagine that those are probably two prideful announcements that have been made on your watch of bringing in and and memorizing those guys. Here again, it's internal operations. I didn't have, you know, Jack to do with it. I'm part of this I'm like you said I'm a steward and I'm happy that it is the case couldn't be more happy uh for for Pete and his family Jackie's such a a a wonderful lady and 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 what and how we honor Pete and you know it was a long time coming that statue was built it's just a matter of getting it uh put up and and doing it and and um and the Simone Augustus thing was uh timely and you know she couldn't have been more pleased coach Kim Mulkey uh made the call and 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 i don't want to embarrass simone but she was very emotional about it in, yeah. in, in a good way and and um that's what you want you know because yeah. th- there's no two special basketball players uh in, in simone and pete that, that that represent the greatness of the game and you know they're they're ours, you know, they're, they're LSU's yeah. and we're not just a football school, George. For sure. <laughs> no, I, I think a lot of your moves that you've made here over the last couple of months have, have proven the popularity or I guess, um, not an easy sales pitch, but it seems like when you walk in with the polo on, you probably get everybody's attention. You do. And you know, I know you had Jamar Kane on and he, how he talks about it. It just does, you, you know, and, and w- when you have LSU and when you do that, and you walk in uh, to a home or to a school or to wherever you go, it, it is an attention getter. And, yeah. um, and, and that's because we do great things and have done great things here for, for generations. And I'm proud of that fact. And uh, uh, the greater good will always outweigh some of the mistakes we make. Sure. I know you have a facilities assessment coming up at yeah. the end of the summer. Um, 
uh, any insight on on what you've seen and found there, or what yeah, the future may look like on yeah, campus? We're going to do it right. You know, the Tiger Athletic Foundation and and uh, in, in partnership, obviously, hand in hand with what we do, uh, funded a, a master plan study because I wanted to see, hey, what what we needed, and I just didn't want my opinion. I've been a sure. few places, and I have a good one, I think. But you just want to see how and what our needs are and so we're in that process of looking at it and obviously the PMAC is is uh, 50 years old this year and uh, yeah. and probably needs some updating uh, it's, it's got good bones and maybe we can see what we can do with that uh, same thing with all that uh, you know property that we have both down Nicholson and where we are currently on Nicholson and North Stadium is that, hey, is this the proper use and best use for that? Mm -hmm. And hand-in-hand hand with the university and, and what we do with TAF, uh, we'll make those decisions and we'll be prudent and, and thinking about what and how we do it. You brought up Stephanie earlier, Stephanie Remp, who was your uh, associate athletic director, and it seemed like you two had such a great working relationship, very much worked well off of one another. She just accepted the Nevada athletics director yeah. job. It was only a matter of time, right, before somebody discovered her talent. How crucial is that replacement in hiring that that position, and what what is the responsibility of that role? Um, he, here again, it's uh, Stephanie was our chief operating officer. She ran the internal guts of the business. Uh, she and Verge Osbury, my deputies, and uh, and she ran the internal part of the business and and just did an incredible job. Uh, like we were talking off camera earlier, Stephanie was with me at, 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 for a long time uh, and and I poached her from uh, Oklahoma at the time uh, and and was lucky to get her to go to Washington and follow me and become COO at, at, at Texas A&M and then you know followed me here and it's long overdue that she gets a head job because she's highly qualified and highly competent but here again um, you know I, I couldn't be more happy with the job she's done in here with me to help uh, to, to help uh, continue making LSU great but you know it's time and and and, and I couldn't be more happy for her. and her replacement will be just like we do in in, mm -hmm. in head coaching searches yeah. you know we'll get a good one and uh, and there's a lot of people that that look up to this job Stephanie has done and what's going on at LSU and uh, uh, I have a feeling uh, it's, it's not going to be a hard process to replace her. Um, you have such a great relationship with Greg Sankey. You, you, you can sense the relationship and the respect that you two have for one another when you're in each other's presence. Yep. Um, you mentioned the additions of Texas and Oklahoma. How do you envision the league over the next five years on how this thing could grow and what it could grow into? You know, I, I would be lying if I t told you, but I can assure you Greg and, and our league will be uh, two steps ahead on the chessboard and ready to pounce when there is e either expansion or change. Uh, but but it, it would be pure speculation, me telling you, hey, I think this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously a huge separation in in revenue uh, with the, uh, the two big uh, Power Five leagues and sure. us and the Big Ten. And so we'll see what, what it brings. But I can assure you what we'll do will make sense and uh, like the last expansion did, and uh, we'll do it the right way. A uh, couple more, i get you out of here, and I appreciate your no, time here on this Wednesday morning. Here. Transfer portal, uh, y you guys took so much advantage of it, and it seems like a lot of the sports, but football was able to really replenish the roster and become competitive from January to spring into the off season. W what's your thoughts of it, and, and does it need to be regulated? Yeah, I, I think it does, Jordy. And look, you, you talked about football, my God. The Coach McMahon, who we haven't talked much about, yeah. how did oh, he, gosh. he 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 thrived on it? Yeah. And uh, look, it, it, do I like it? No, I mean I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> I mean you know, yeah. I'm 59 years old. I mean I liked the way it was. I liked you know, <laughs> I liked when Pete Pete Maravich was at the uh, was at the Cal Palace, and I right. liked you know watching Shaq and and Mahmoud and and those guys do their thing. But things change, and we have to accept that and. We have accepted it to our advantage. Now, is it good for the greater good? I don't think so. And we have to get some guardrails and get some things in how and what we do it. And, and we will, and we'll figure it out. I just hopefully it'll be uh, in due time. Yeah. What, maybe an unfair question. Where no. does the regulation 
on that conversation begin? Is it the NCAA? Is it conference? Is it institution? It's a great question. You know, or the courts. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's driven a lot of this uh -huh. stuff, you know, and given, given student athletes opportunities and what and how we do this stuff, uh, you, you know, it, it's a hard question, and, it, and the answer is all the above. And so we have to be very smart about what and how we do it and talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, what is the vantage point of institutions like LSU to the NCAA? What, how does that relationship work now with – things changing yeah it's hard uh, you know it, it's more of we're, we're really it, it's what you're closest to obviously we're closest to the sec mm -hmm. and then you know we, we delegate a lot of that authority to the commissioner to represent us as a league with the ncaa and what and how it does it because you know we know that the ncaa is so different with with desperate parts mm -hmm. you know division three schools all the way to what we have in division one which makes no sense i mean sure. you know Slippery Rock in, in Ohio State, you know, right. come on, really? Right. And, and so what happens is, is that you, 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 you regulate to the lowest common denominator, and that's what's happened. And we do it to ourselves. It's no one's fault individually. It's us. We're part of it. I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. and, and we've over-regulated and done silly things and, and – you know, hopefully going forward, we'll fix it. But it's it's a holistic view. And and Greg is in the middle of it. And, and you know, I support what and how he does it. And and if I can help in any way, we will. But we'll always do it, uh, you know, with two things in mind. Hey, is it good for LSU? And is it good for the greater good of sport? And we've got to really think about both those things uh, going forward. Uh, your opening weekends for college football, your your opening game in New Orleans on Sunday in primetime, and yeah. then your home opener at, versus Southern on campus yeah. will be two special weekends, I know, for Brian Kelly to be a part of. But for, for, for you, somebody who was um, in that uh, scheduling process, to, to see that kind of playing out will be cool, I'd imagine. Yeah, it really will be. I mean, you know those Sunday night games and on, on – um, Labor Day weekend, do a monster rating. It'll be yeah. good exposure, not only for our programs, but for the university as a whole. And uh, really look forward to that game. And then just having a, a great uh, crosstown, uh, I can't even call them a rival. They're sure. friends. You know, yeah. they, 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 we, we love each other, and, and they're, they're an important part of the fabric of this community. And it's finally, you know, about time that yeah. we've done something this special. And, and I'm looking forward uh, uh, not only to, to having uh, the Southern football team here, but to have their fans and the band. wonderful traditions, yeah. tailgating their band, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Human Jukebox is uh, special. You can't wait, man. I get yeah. the halftime show. Yeah. It's worth the price of admission. Uh, um, Woody, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. It's great Glad to, to see be you. here, Jordy. Yes, I can't tell you no, you know that. So <laughs> it's, it's always fun to be here. Um, have a great rest of your week, and we will uh, talk again soon. Scott Woodward. Uh, joining us here on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be back with more coming at you here, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.